Hey Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. In today's lesson, I answer the question, what was the Berlin Airlift? Now, in order to understand the Berlin Airlift, it's important to understand the Cold War. Now, the Cold War was a war of wars between the United States and its allies and the Soviet Union. Now, the sticking point between the two was democracy or communism. You see, both sides wanted a certain style of government for post-war Germany. So the United States and their allies, they wanted Germany to have a democratic government. And in, in, a, dem in a democracy, uh, the citizens, they will elect representatives to go to the capital city and cast votes that represent the will of the people. Now, in a communist government, the government is given more authority and more power. And the reason they're given more authority and power is because the government is able to make sure that things are equal amongst all the people. And history has shown us that that's not what always happened, but that is the idea of communism. It's to make things equal amongst everybody. So there were two differing opinions as to what to do with post-war Germany. But before this, the United States, the French, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union, they were all united as one in order to defeat Hitler. And once this was done, they were able to peacefully come to an agreement as to how to divide up Germany and its capital city. Watch this. <laughs> Members of the Allied Control Commission for Germany arrive at Marshal Zhukov's headquarters in Berlin to sign the joint agreement. General Eisenhower is on hand to represent the United States. Marshal Zhukov makes it official for Russia, and Monty adds his signature for Britain. The next to ratify the agreement is France's General de Tassigny, who is followed by our own Ike. Official British pictures of the men who will control the post-war destiny of Germany. So as you saw there, the United States, the French, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union were all responsible for a certain portion of Germany. Now they also agreed to do the same thing with Berlin, the capital city of Germany. This would make things very challenging because Berlin is located in the Soviet portion of Germany. Now, as time went on, agreements between these allies, as they were known during World War II, their agreements started to break down. The United States, Great Britain, and the French would eventually combine their portions of Germany in order to create West Germany. And they encouraged the Soviet Union to join them in order to create a democratic Germany. But the Soviet Union was not interested in this. As a matter of fact, there would be evidence that would come out later that the Soviet Union actually wanted more control of the people. So in June of 1948, the Soviet Union would do different things in order to disrupt access to West Berlin. Remember, West Berlin is inside the Soviet portion of Germany. And this would adversely affect the people of West Berlin. Finally, on June 24th, 1948, the Russians would completely close off all access to Western Berlin. Now they did this by closing all of the highways, all of the railroads and all of the canals. Now the reason they did this was because they believed that if they starved the people in West Berlin, then eventually this would force the United States, the French and Great Britain out of West Berlin and the people of West Berlin would eventually turn to communism as a way of escape. This was a moment of truth for President Harry Truman, and it would definitely test his leadership. Now, the year before, he already stated that he was willing to help those who were resisting communism. And as a result of that commitment, he was unwilling to retreat from West Berlin. But it's important to understand that Harry Truman was unsure as to if his response would lead the country into another war. But he had to act quickly. So here are three options that were considered. Number one was to use force in order to get past the blockade to supply the people of West Berlin. The second option was to use the atomic weapon, which they used in 1945 on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
And then the third option was to supply the people of West Berlin by air. And so President Truman chose the third option and Operation Vittles, also known as the Berlin Airlift, began on June 26th. So the Berlin Airlift was no small task. In one 24 hour period, there was almost 13,000 tons of supplies delivered to West Berlin. Now one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. This would fill the people of West Berlin with hope. They were supplied with all the necessities like food, fuel, and other supplies. You know, the allies also dropped messages of hope and candy in order to keep spirits high during this time. Now, as all of this is going on, all these planes dro constantly dropping supplies into West Berlin, President Truman also ordered the B-29 bombers to be positioned within striking distance of Soviet territory. Now, the Soviets knew, like everyone else knew, that it was the B-29 bomber that carried the atomic weapon. However, these bombers did not have atomic weapons on them. Instead, President Truman used the unknown to show the Soviet Union that he meant business. Now, by the end of this episode, it was clear that there was a deep divide between East and Western Europe. And this Cold War would last for decades. So the Soviets would end up calling off the Berlin blockade in May of 1949, but the Berlin airlift continued until September 30th of that year, just to increase the reserves of food and fuel, just in case something else happened. But it was during these 15 months of the Berlin airlift that they, there were close to 300,000 flights that delivered 2.3 million tons of food and supplies to West Berlin. And as Truman had hoped, West Berlin was able to stay in the hands of the Allies. However, this would mark the beginning of the Cold War. And the last thing I want to mention is that there were 31 U.S. soldiers and 39 British soldiers who lost their lives uh, participating in the Berlin airlift. And there were civilians who lost their lives as well participating in this. And I just wanted to mention that out of respect uh, to those who lost, lost their lives uh, serving their country. Well, that is the social studies lesson for the day. I thank you so much for watching. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Also, feel free to download the worksheet that goes along with this lesson to further your understanding of the Berlin Airlift. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, keep chasing the vision. Bye.